Before starting any new health program or before you begin taking any medication or supplement, always check with your primary health care provider. Neurological disorders are connected to intestinal health? Maybe. Maybe surprising to many, but the gut and the health of the colon and intestine does seem to be directly linked to the health of the brain, mind, and of course your mental health. Joining us now to explain the connections are Dr. Allison Bested. She's a hematological pathologist specializing in the treatment of myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and multiple chemical sensitivities. And we've got with us Dr. Makoto Trotter. He's a naturopathic doctor with a special interest in hormones and digestion. And you practice out of the Zen Thai Wellness Center. That's right. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, listen, let's start off because a lot of folks watching the show tonight are going to say, Someone told me I've got leaky gut or permeable bowel syndrome, and, and maybe they explained it, like a naturopathic doctor or somebody who specializes sort of in this area loosely yourself as well, Dr. Bessett. But for those who have just heard about it and never experienced it themselves or, or might think it's some kind of flaky, kooky kind of stuff, let's talk about it. I mean, what is this in the, in the opinion of a, of a hematologist first? Right. Well, in uh, terms of uh, traditional medicine, uh, we tend to diagnose people as having irritable bowel syndrome. Right. So irritable bowel syndrome is a collection of symptoms where people have bloating, gas, indigestion, either constipation or alternating diarrhea and constipation. And a lot of times the constipation is actually uh, the diarrhea is part of the constipation problem. And who doesn't have some of those symptoms these days, by the way? You're going to see a lot of not only drugs, but natural medicines and all kinds of sorts of things targeted to folks that actually experience all of those symptoms or some of them. Uh, and certainly with this day and age, you know, today's lifestyle and crazy uh, diets and uh, fast food and so forth. So who doesn't have this? But, but where's the science in your mind as it relates to this? Well, I think the science has to, So this is a diagnosis, really, of exclusion. Yeah. And you have to rule out the things that you can rule out. And so what happens is when you have these kinds of symptoms, normally you look at what the person can you what you can rule out so you perhaps uh, send them for an upper GI series or in, uh, basically a gastroscopy to rule out upper intestinal things such as celiac disease mm -hmm. Um, so celiac is obviously uh, known as wheat antibodies, uh, antibodies to uh, gluten. So if you have that kind of problem, then it's basically not caused, it's basically not irritable bowel syndrome. And then you also want to do a lower intestinal scope, uh, which is a colonoscopy. And that's to rule out in other inflammatory bowel disorders that cause ulcers of the bowel, either all the way through the thickness of the bowel or partial, things such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So these things have to be ruled out first, and these things can cause these symptoms, plus uh, bloody diarrhea as well. So, so the science starts with ruling out yes. what you know to be diagnostic criteria and if it's none of those things it's consider Absolutely. the leaky gut syndrome. Okay so Dr. Trotter I mean from a naturopathic perspective because often I fully well understand this you know you're gonna see the folks and patients that come off the heels of having seen every other practitioner specialist and so forth from the eyes of a naturopathic doctor, how do you describe this uh, to patients, leaky gut, permeable bowel? Well, the term leaky gut itself is a bit of a misnomer because it almost sounds like it's an emergency type situation. Yeah, like you're, uh, you're, you're getting it's separated separated because, bowel. yeah, perforation right. or yeah, something like yeah. that, but it's yeah. not that. But, um, so a better term for it is hyperpermeability syndrome. So it's essentially that the integrity of the gut um, is compromised whereby particles that, undigested particles, can actually penetrate into the bloodstream and cause an immune response, which can lead to digestive problems or systemic problems. What kinds of things might literally uh, be permeable that they'd end up in the bloodstream with somebody got hyperpermeability. Uh, what kinds of things would be so? It can be about? particles of food, microparticles of food. It can be um, components of um, bacteria or other pathogens, and those are things that can. They're called antigens, and when they get into the bloodstream, they can mount an immune response. The body says, you know, what the heck is that, and starts to tag it or exactly. flag it as something yeah. foreign, very much like a bacteria or virus or any of the sort, right? That's right. As you set up for your homey little experiment here, I'm just going to go over to you, Dr. Bested, and ask you the question: How does a human Hematologist, somebody who specializes otherwise uh, in you know very hardcore science, get into uh, giving this kind of thing the time of day. Well, irritable bowel syndrome is found in roughly 50 to 70 percent of patients who have myalgic encephalomyelitis, or which other name is chronic fatigue syndrome, or fibromyalgia. So I was exposed very early on to this set of symptoms because most of the patients have it. Have this? It's yes, a comorbidity, or that comes along it's a with this. Uh, it's part of these syndromes. So do, do we know chicken and egg, or do we understand what comes first and what sort of leads? Well, uh, there was some discussion that uh, some of the patients who have uh, developed.
developed a myalgic encephalomyelitis, there might be a chronic infection in their bowels, and it might be part of the syndrome, but we've not really kind of teased it out fully yet. Interesting. Okay, so Dr. Strader, you have this uh, homey little uh, experiment here. Walk us through hyperpermeability. So essentially this sieve is like a normal functioning gut. Um, it will allow some particles through, whereas this colander is similar to a someone who has leaky gut syndrome or hyperpermeability. So I'll just give a little demonstration. So you're, you're just dumping uh, some grains in there. Just dumping some grains in, and we're looking at the output and what's kept. So some prevented. things are getting through. So let's take That's this right. as if the sieve is the gut and the bowl is your system, the some things that are getting through we can consider as micronutrients, Nutrients, things right? that your body needs. Macronutrients, That's proteins, right. fats, so forth, right? Okay. And when we're looking at someone who has leaky gut, there are things that might pass through that could mount an immune response, and I was, as I was mentioning. Ultimately, that colander there uh, with larger pores, hyperpermeable, representing somebody with leaky gut, there's very little left. So That's more right. stuff getting through, ultimately, that shouldn't get through. That's right. Okay, well, that, that paints a picture for me. That clarifies it for me. And it, I it's an analogy, yeah. but, uh, but it's something that's visual. This is oversimplified. Yeah. Right. No, we appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So this, this is a relationship. You've actually studied, when I asked the question, Dr. Bessett, where's the science? There was a really interesting you know, study that you, know, you were uh, a part of. It was a smallish study, about yes. 30 patients or so. That's right. But that, and this is where I want to go next, that got into the mind you know, gut connection, especially with these individuals with ME. That's right. Talk to us about that. So we had uh, 39 patients with uh, ME uh, CFS, and we compared them to normal patients that didn't have any uh, ME. And we basically uh, fed the patients. 50% uh, of them had a placebo, and 50% had a very special strain of Shirota uh, acidophilus or probiotic. And we were hoping to see that the patients would have an improvement in their oxidative scores. In other words, we know that these people are oxidatively stressed. They tend to be more more broken down than other people. Free radicals flowing Free over radicals, the body. Exactly. Yeah. We didn't world. find that. But we also looked at their depression scores and their anxiety scores, and we were greatly impressed that these people had an improvement in their anxiety after taking the acidophilus. And what that stressed to me was that the gut and the mind are connected. Why? Because we both have the same biochemistry happening in our brain as in our gut. So if we improve our gut function, we also improve the anxiety in our brain. So it's fascinating. Very fascinating to bring that concept mm -hmm. down to the scientific uh, world. Dr. Trotter, in your practice, how do you manage the mind-gut or mind-body uh, connection? Well, it's always going back to the basics. And so the most important thing is looking at someone's sleep. Stress management is paramount when it comes to digestive health because the gut itself functions as a second brain. Sometimes the digestive tract feels stress before you're even aware of it. Absolutely. So it's always important to address mind-body and stress Especially management. Especially as we're talking about people with gut, you know, or GERD rather, uh, gastrointestinal reflux. I mean, anxiety can provoke the emission or release of hyperacidity. Yes. Just in 30 seconds or less, yes. we seed and feed approach. Yes. Walk us this real quick. This is the approach that we use from the Environmental Health Clinic and it means weeding out the aggravators, things like known food sensitivities, known parasites, planting the seeds of health. So looking at sleep, are you getting enough of it? Exercise, can you do it in more moderation, pacing? The environment, do you have a calm environment? Do you have things, pesticides? Diet and drugs, are they irritating your stomach? Things like indomethacin or Advil, things like that that are perhaps irritating your stomach. And how do you support yourself? And then when you figure out all the things that are helping you to do more of those kind of things so that you can nurture whatever helps you. Excellent work, guys. Up next, we'll tell you how to test for a leaky gut. But plus, by the way, tonight we're giving away VIP passes to the Whole Life Expo. That's happening next week, November 25th through the 27th at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. We'll be filming there next Friday and you could be a part of our first time ever live audience. Call us now for your chance to qualify. Stay right there. us in the GTA by dialing 416-872-2724 or outside the area at 1-888-863-2724. Send an email to wildonhealth at cp24.com or follow Bryce on Twitter by visiting cp24.com.